now we talk about invertebrates and the vertebrates we also talk about their significance how they are important for us invertebrates we talk about them first invertebrates are the organisms the animals who do not have um, a vertebral column there are lot many groups of invertebrate animals we talk about them one by one and we start from the simplest the first one uh, the first uh, group that is categorized uh, into animals the multicellular organisms are called the porifera say pori para the organisms which have pores in their body we commonly call them or also call them sponges the sponges are included in the phylum the larger group phylum is actually a larger group in classification um so sponges they are classified into the phylum porifera these are the organisms which have pores in their bodies which have porous bodies these organisms have uh usually they are attached from um, on a substrate maybe a rock maybe the surface of the so of uh, the bottom of a, uh, a sea and on the other side they have mouth mouth is the only opening in um, these animals through which water may enter or water may uh, go out um, they do not have any specialized organs they are just multicellular organisms which consist of two layers of cells the external layer called ectoderm internal layer called endoderm though they do have some specialized cells there are some special types of cells present uh, in their endoderm and sometimes their ectoderm which help them in uh, taking their food from the environment which is of course um, water how they actually take their nutrition water enters into their body through pores or sometimes through mouth and uh, they uh, their specific cells extract the food material um the phytoplankton or the zooplankton from that water uh by their ciliary ciliary movements that is movements like cilia they have actually they are actually hair like projections um and they uh, acquire that food from that water and then remove that water back uh sponges uh they are um, important for human beings we know that we uh, do lot many of our washings with the help of sponges sponges are used in the washing processes they are actually there are these are the pieces of sponges uh, sponge organisms sponges are also used widely in uh, sound proofing the environments we know whenever there is need of a sound proofing sponges are um, their bodies are made like this that they absorb the sounds so these are usually used for sound proofing of the buildings uh, and sound proofing of some other materials like the recording instruments then comes the next group called the cilindrata cilindrata for example jellyfishes these are mainly marine organisms that is they lives inside the seas and the oceans they have some simple organs they do have a mouth they have specialized organs called tentacles which help them in um, their movement as you can see in a picture there is a jellyfish which have its tentacles below these help this uh, jellyfish in collecting its food from the environment and it also help it in the movement these organisms have a specific property they have stinging cells stinging jo dung maarne wale cells they can sting whenever they have they um, go close to a prey then um upon their tentacles some specific cells are present which are called stinging cells these cells produce a poison and also uh, they have a long filament which is usually present inside the cell whenever a prey comes close comes close to them they release those cells um those filaments from their cells uh, inside out and uh, these filaments are in just um, act like injections for the body of the prey and they inject the poison in the body of the prey the result is this that uh, the prey uh, is uh, either killed or maybe um deactivated that is paralyzed and then they can easily eat upon it they do have a mouth 
and they do have tentacles. Cylindrates also have a specific property. They produce fluorescent light. They are usually present in the lower layers of ocean where almost um, no light penetrates. Uh, there are very uh, few, we can say, uh, molecules of uh, the light, the photons that they uh, do come. Um, in those parts, uh, these, these organisms, the jellyfishes and the others, they do live and they produce a fluorescent light. Sometimes they are called lights of the sea because if the scientists or some people uh, go inside that water in that area and uh, they, uh, they look at these organisms, they, they shine, they flourish, they produce light. Um, so this is about the cylindrates. Now we talk about the next group, which is the worms. Worms are actually categorized into different phyla, but we will talk about them uh, generally as worms. There are different types of worms which are present in the animal kingdom. Mostly, these worms are the parasites. That is, they live inside or outside the bodies of the other organisms. There are different types of worms. Sometimes, as you can see in a picture, they're flat. Their surface or their body is like a flat tape. We call them flat worms. Sometimes they are rounded and they are long with the both tapering ends. That is, both ends are pointed. Um, we call them round worms. Sometimes they have um, a rounded body, but not both ends are pointed. So there are different types of worms. You can see on a side, and we commonly see this one called earthworm. Many times when there is a season of, um, of rain, we know there is raining, uh, many brownish colored worms we can see uh, on the uh, surface of uh, like grasses uh, and the mud. These are called the earthworms. So, there are different types of worms. Worms have uh, many times, they have a regenerative power. This is a specific property. If their one part is cut down and lost, they can again make their body part, the same body part in the same way. We call this property regeneration. So, many of the worms do have a regenerative power, but of course, not all of them. The flat worms and round worms, these are very important parasites of human beings. These flat worms are present in the intestines of human beings, uh, particularly in the children. And um, they can uh, actually eat upon all the digested food from the intestine of the uh, child. And child become very weak. Um, just like that, round worms, they also uh, uh, live inside the uh, different parts of the digestive tract and they also feed upon the digested food material present in the intestine and the person become weak slowly though we can treat them with different types of medicines there are different types of medicines which releases these forms from the body of the uh, child or adult human being how do they survive in that specific environment of the digestive tract because it's sometimes acidic, it is sometimes alkaline and uh, how do they attach there to the surfaces otherwise they will be flushed with the food. These worms have some specific mouth parts. With the help of those mouth parts, they attach themselves to the walls of the intestine and when they are attached to the walls of the intestine, they can survive there. Though these infections are treatable, these infections are acquired from um, mostly soils, uh, sometimes from water and sometimes from eating the infected um, animal meat which is poorly cooked. So this is very important that if the meat is not properly cooked, then uh, it may cause the transfer of infection from uh, the animal's meat to the human being. There are uh, some other worms uh, called flukes, the flat worms, which are present inside the liver. Um, and these could also be transmitted um, if the meat is not, that is the liver is not properly cooked. We call it kaleji usually. Um, kaleji um, flukes infected ho sakti hai. Aur uh, usko check karne ke liye ek uh, common tariqa bataya jata hai ki agar aap kaleji ko pieces mein kaat lein, 
اور اس کے جو پارٹس ہیں جو پیسز ہیں ان کو ہاتھ سے پریس کریں دبائیں تو اگر اس میں یہ وارمز ہوں گے تو وہ باہر نکل آئیں گے پریفرنس یہ ہے کہ اس طرح کی کلیجی کو استعمال نہ کیا جائے اس لیے کیونکہ یہ اس انفیکشن کو ٹرانسفر کر سکتی ہے دین دا نیکسٹ گروپ وچ از ناٹ اے پیراسائٹ دس از وام ارتھ وام بٹ دس از ایکسٹریملی امپورٹنٹ بیکاز ارتھ وامس دے لیو ان سائڈ دا مڈ یوزلی انڈر دا ٹریز دا پلانٹس دا ارتھ وامس آر ویری امپورٹنٹ بیکاز دے فیڈ اپان دا ڈیڈ آرگینک میٹر اینڈ وین دے فیڈ اپان دا ڈیڈ آرگینک میٹر دے کنورٹ اٹ ان ٹو یوزیبل فارم فار دا پلانٹ سو اٹ انکریزز دا فرٹیلٹی آف سوائل ان وچ اٹ از پریزنٹ بیکاز اٹ میکس فار ایگزامپل نائٹروجن فاسفورس اینڈ ادر مٹیریلس اویلیبل فار دا پلانٹس سو ارتھ وام از ڈی کمپوزر وچ ایٹ اپون دا ڈیڈ آرگینک میٹرس اینڈ اٹ از بینیفیشل فار دا سوائل بیکاز اٹ انکریزز دا فرٹیلٹی آف دا سوائل اٹ مینس دیٹ وامس دے آر ہارمفل اینڈ دے آر بینیفیشل ناؤ دا نیکسٹ فائل ہم آرتھوپوڈس آرتھوپوڈس آر ویری وائڈلی ڈسٹریبیوٹڈ وی کامنلی نو انسیکٹس کیڑے مکوڑے اشرات الارس دا انسیکٹس دے آر ون آف دا موسٹ وائڈلی ڈسٹریبیوٹڈ اینڈ ڈائیورس گروپ آن ارتھ ایکچولی انسیکٹس ہیو مچ مور اسپیشیز دین آل ادر آلموسٹ آل ادر آرگنزمس اینڈ دے آر ویری وائڈلی ڈسٹریبیوٹڈ دا فائلم آرتھوپوڈا ہیو فور میجر گروپس وچ آر امپارٹنٹ دا ایرکنیڈا وچ انکلوڈ اسپائڈرس اینڈ ٹکس اینڈ مائٹس کرسٹیشیا وچ انکلوڈس مینی آف دا زو پلنکٹونس دا انسیکٹس وچ آر پرزنٹ آلموسٹ ایوری ویئر وین ایور یو لوک ایٹ اے سوائل یو لوک ایٹ واٹر یو لوک ایٹ ایئر یو فائنڈ سم سم آف دا انسیکٹس لائک ماسکیٹوز لائک بٹر فلائز ناٹ مینی ادرس دین دا ملیپیڈس اینڈ دا سینٹیپیڈس ملیپیڈس اینڈ سینٹیپیڈس آر سم اسپیسیفک گروپس which are long worms and they are segmented and uh, they have lot many legs. Arthropoda, the phylum, have some general characteristics. They do have an, an exoskeleton. That is, the skeleton, the skeletal support of their um, support system of these uh, organisms is present outside rather than inside. We know we have an internal skeleton. We have our bones inside the muscles and the skin. They have their skeleton outside. So we call them the organisms which have an exoskeleton, outside skeleton. They are segmented. Their body consists of segments. That is, it is divided into small parts. If we look at a butterfly, its body, not its wings, then you can find segments. Their body is, arthropods body is generally divided into three regions. First one is called the head region. Second is called the thorax. Uh, and the third one is called the abdomen. Hydrogen includes, of course, the head and the neck part. Then the thorax, which is, uh, we can call it, it the, almost the chest part. And then comes the abdomen, the softer part, which have its soft organs. Now we talk about its four groups. The arachnida, the spiders, ticks and mites. These are the organisms which have actually four pairs of legs. That is, eight legs. Spiders have some very specific characteristics. Many spiders they are very poisonous. They can kill a person. Um, many spiders, they are harmless. We can, they, are, uh, they, they cannot actually harm anyone. We can see a lot many spiders in our houses which are making their uh, webs on different places. They do not usually harm us. Um, spiders, they produce some specific um, materials with which um, you can see that they can make very fine threads These very fine threads or materials sometimes are used um, in making certain products. Then the ticks and mites. The ticks and mites, um, they are parasites. They are actually the ectoparasites, mostly of the cattle. So they are important for us because um, they can harm the cattle, uh, which are the livestock of um, human beings. We, we culture them for our own purpose, for getting meat, milk, um, or eggs. Uh, they live upon the body surface of the cattle, 
and they feed upon their blood. So ticks and mites um, should be controlled in the livestock. Um, the lysis, <laughs> they are also uh, one of the arthropods. And uh, we know that they have specific characteristics that they stick to the hair. They release some material that attaches and stick them to the uh, hairs of the uh, head or uh, maybe some other body part. And uh, when this sticky material is removed, they are flushed away. Then the crustaceans. Crustaceans are very important because these are present in lakes and uh, fresh waters mostly and some marine waters. They make um, the very important part called zooplankton of the food chains or the food webs. They are actually the link between the producers and the uh, larger um, animals, the consumers of uh, water ecosystems. Then the insects. Insects are um, very widely distributed. There are some very, very useful insects. Like we know that honeybees, they produce honey for, um, for us and for uh, use of our children, for us, ourselves. Um, honey is a product of um, honeybee and there are different types of honeybees, a small one, a large one, which makes different types of uh, honeys which have some their own characteristics which are good for health and which are also useful for certain medicines. Um, there are very harmful insects like uh, uh, those insects like dragonflies which can damage our crops. Uh, there are um, other damaging arthropods like termites which can damage our uh, buildings damage our wood, wood um, based structures. So insects and uh, spiders, the crustaceans, arthropods, sometimes they are very beautiful, they are very um, like the butterflies which makes or which actually adds um, a lot to the beauty of the nature. Uh, sometimes they are very harmful for us, sometimes they are very useful for us. We know the silkworm which produces silk for us. There is a lac insect which produces a material called lac, uh, which is used in, um, in, uh, in bindings and different types of other materials. Um, so arthropoda is a very diverse group and it is very widely distributed group on the planet Earth. Then comes the mollusks, the phylum mollusca. These are the organisms which have shells and a soft body. Their body is soft inside and they have a harder shell. It includes snails, lobsters, there are certain lobsters we know which makes pearls for us. There are different types of shells which we use uh, to make ornaments. This is also a very important group which is mostly marine. That is, it is present mostly in the oceans um, and uh, provides actually, say, uh, different types of products for us like the ornamental products. Um, and sometimes their soft bodies are also eaten, soft bodies are also eaten uh, by some people for um, some medicinal purposes. We also grow lobsters for making pearls for us. Then comes the last group of the invertebrata called the echinoderms or the spiny skinned animals. Echinoderms, spiny skinned animals. Echino means spiny, derm means dermis, dermis the skin. These are exclusively marine. These are the animals which are present only in the oceans and seas. They have specific extensions of their skin which looks like spine uh, and these spines actually help them into capturing their prey or uh, handling with the environment. Uh, these organisms uh, for their movement have a very specific type of system called the water vascular system. The water vascular system is a very specific system of tubes towards their ventral side of the body they do have lot many tubes which have a fluid that is uh, its composition is just like that of the sea water um, and uh, these extensions are called tube feet. They actually when they attach to a specific surface they produce a vacuum and due to that vacuum they attach to that surface uh, and then by a thrush the whole organism the animal moves uh, towards uh, that substratum with which they are attached. Then they are retracted and they attach to the next part. This is how the animal move. Echinoderms uh, are thought to be the link between invertebrates and the vertebrates um, because they have certain specific characteristics which uh, match them with the invertebrates and they have some other characteristics which match them with the vertebrates. 
So, sometimes we, um, we call them a link between the invertebrates and the vertebrate animals. Examples are the starfishes, very common, you can see very beautiful starfishes present in our museum, uh, different types of musea if you observe them. Other ones are called like sea cucumbers, sea anemones, which are very beautiful. Some are called feather stars, which looks like in their appearance, um, like a feather of a bird. Um, so uh, they also add uh, uh, to the beauty of the oceans. If we go down the ocean and towards its bottom, we can see lot many echinoderms adding to the uh, beauty of the ocean and makes the very important part of the food chains and food webs uh, of the seas and the oceans. So invertebrates, they are very important for us. For human use, sponges are widely used in soundproofing, in washing. Worms are important because they are parasites of domestic animals and the human beings themselves. Insects are pests of many crops, so they are harmful, we have to handle with them. There are many useful insects like honeybee, lac insect, silkworm. There are different types of other invertebrates like lobsters which make pearls for us, culture them for uh, making pearls. They are components of the food webs, they are components of the particularly aquatic food webs, they are components of terrestrial food webs. As the part of the food webs in the chains, they actually maintains the stability of those ecosystems. So this was about the invertebrates. They are important for us from various respects. 